Welcome to Global Altar Platform, a platform that exists to bring believers back to their Bibles and prepare them to become efficient in the kingdom of God. Join me as I welcome your host, Dr. Levin Damisa. Praise the Lord. Welcome to tonight's episode. We bless God for making us see the beautiful day last Saturday in the month of May. Father, we thank you, Lord. we bless you for this opportunity to be called by your name. Lord, we thank you for the privilege to be called by you into this teaching. Lord, let your glory and your power back your word up with life transformation, O God. In the name of Jesus, amen. Praise God, our teaming viewers and listeners. We thank God for his mercies. Last episode, we look at the prodigal son, actually using the story to look at Understanding Access for Destiny Recovery. Tonight, we are looking at a different dimension, service as key to greatness. For every child of God, Christian service is a ladder to greatness. However, not everyone that serves attain greatness because some persons have different understanding of what the purpose of service in the house of God is. We trust God that Global Altar Platform, our desire is to get believers back to their Bibles, is to get Christians to look at what the Lord Jesus said in the midst of information cloud. In this era of too many teachings, too many information, we are looking at how does service affect the child of God. And here we say that service is a ladder to greatness. That is not the way the world teaches. The world believes that you have to be the boss, but Jesus Christ's paradigm is quite different. Now, Christian service is a lifetime opportunity for greatness, whether you like it or not. Everyone that serves in the Lord should end up great. And so, however, Christian service is incident on personal fellowship with Christ. No genuine Christian work can take place until that work is Christ-centered, Christ-originated, Christ-directed, and Christ-focused. What we mean here is that the work of a believer, your service in the sanctuary, your work in the body of Christ, it can only take place if it must be acceptable to God when is Christ originated, is Christ directed, is Christ centered, and is Christ focused. The, the, the desire we have is that we all may finish strong. That every worker in the house of God, every child of God that starts will finish strong. Because Jesus said, he that overcomes to the end, the same shall wear the crown of life. So starting big is beautiful. Starting great is sweet. But the desire of Jesus Christ is that we finish strong. And that's our prayer tonight for everyone listening to us and those that will listen and those that will share that God will help us to finish strong in the Christian race in the name of Jesus. Our scriptural reference tonight, as we look at service as key to greatness, is Mark chapter 3, verse 13 to 15. Mark chapter 3, verse 13 to 15. Mark chapter 3, verse 13 to 15. The Bible says, And he went up on the mountain and called to him those he himself wanted. And they came to him. Then he appointed twelve that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach and to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out demons. Amen. That is uh, the New King James. If you look at the classic King James, he says something about that they should be with him and that he might send them out. He says, And he ordained twelve that they should be with him, and that he might send them forth to preach. Here, the scripture is giving us an understanding that the basis of our work as believers is union with Christ, fellowship with Christ, because he is the owner of the work. Amen. Jesus Christ is the owner of the work. He is the Lord of the harvest. And every investor must invest in tune with the owner of the work. When a man arrogates himself the ownership of God's work, that man is set himself on collision course with God. May that not be our portion in the name of Jesus. Now, 
How does service open doors for greatness? How does service in the house of God give you access to greatness in the things of God? We found out that even in the time of the disciples, there was a time they had an argument as to who was to be great. They had an argument of who is to be great among them. And Christ was so touched. And the Bible said Christ did something. In Mark chapter 9, verse 33 to 37. Here he says, And he came to Capernaum, and being in the house, he asked them, What was it that you disputed among yourself by the way? You know, when you look at the things that Christ did, Christ was sweet. Christ is so powerful. They were going with the disciples. And the Bible says he heard them discussing. He just smiled to himself. He just smiled as they were walking. It, didn't, it, 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 it appeared as if he was not hearing what they were saying. But when they got to a place that was convenient, that is one thing. The timing of, of impartation. The timing of visitation. Jesus Christ knew that they were arguing, they were discussing. It did as if nothing moved him. But when they got to a place in a house in Campanau, the Bible said Christ got their attention and said, Come guys, what was it that you disputed among yourselves? But they heard their peace. Because they were shocked that Christ heard. They didn't know that Christ was listening to their discussions. The Bible said they heard their peace. What does that tell you? There was a shock effect. Say, for by the way, they had disputed among themselves who should be the greatest. Imagine John, Peter, James, Matthew, Thomas, Judah Iscariot, they were discussing, I'll be the greatest, I'll be the greatest, I'll be the greatest. And they were, they were discussing in harsh tones. But Christ heard. And the Bible says, And he sat down and called the twelve and said unto them, If any man desire to be first, the same shall be the last of all and servant of all. And he took a child and set him in the midst of them. And when he had taken him in his arms, he said unto them, Whosoever shall receive one of such children in my name, receiveth me. And whosoever shall receive me, receiveth not me, but him that sent me. Hallelujah. You know, there was a time, I've, I've, I can't remember the country, that the, the, something happened, I mean, the old global, it was on a global screen some years ago. I forgot the country exactly, where the uh, uh, miners enter a mine, a, inside mining and then the cave, the mining cave gave in and it was flooded. It was a global rescue effort. It was a global rescue effort that even food was being passed to them until rescue was done. One thing that caught the attention of the world was that the leader, the team leader, yes, the coach, the footballers, yes, the footballers went to play. It was in Thailand or so. They, they went to play and their adventure, there was flood and they were trapped. The coach was the last to come out of that rescue. It happened again in another country where the team lead was the last to come out. That was something that was very rare. And that was what Christ was saying here. That when they were arguing as to who shall be great among them, he didn't, list, he didn't do as if he, he wasn't perturbed. He needed to get the attention. And where we read our opening scripture, the Bible says he called the twelve again because they are the foundation of the gospel. In quote, they, they needed to get the right perspective. They must get the perception of Christian service right so that every other worker can be patterned. The Bible says we are built after the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. Amen. And that's why when Christ was giving them the, new, the Great Commission, what has become what you call the Great Commission, he said, go into all the world and teach them whatsoever I have commanded you in the past tense. What Christ was telling is that there's no other teaching that is going to come outside of what I've commanded you. There's no other revelation that will come that will not be within the precept, within the ambit of the scriptures as the revealed word of God. He said, he called them, he, he sat down, he got their attention, and the Bible says he called a child. Yesterday was Children's Day in Nigeria and many parts of the world. Why did God call a child to demonstrate the key to greatness? One, children trust easily. 
Every worker that needs to grow in the Lord must have the attitude of a child. A child trusts his parents or her parents easily. When a child distrusts you, then there's crisis. A child trusts easily. And the Bible says he drew a picture of a child. It's very important. Now, when you look at Matthew chapter 18, the same scripture, I want you to understand why it's very significant. The Bible says, at the same time, Matthew 18 verse 1 to 5, at the same time came the disciples unto Jesus saying, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them. And he said, verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. He said, whosoever does not humble himself as a child cannot be great in the kingdom. Why are we teaching this? Why is God directing us? Because many people, many some believers are getting offended in the Lord. Some of us are taking offense because your gift is not duly recognized in the church. Some of us are picking offense because you are not getting the stage effect of your gifting. Some of us are getting rebellious. Some of us are getting frustrated. But Jesus says, if you must be great in the kingdom, as a worker, as a child of God, you must be like a child at heart. And what are those attributes of a child? One, a child trusts easily. Two, a child cannot hide hunger. When children are hungry, they cry. Even a baby, a newborn. When a newborn starts sucking the breast of his or her mother, and if the child is not getting enough milk, the child cries really easily. He cries. So children cry, they cannot hide their hunger. So if a believer, if you must grow into greatness, your hunger for the word of God should not be hidden. Your craving for the word must be prime. Apostle Peter said, as newborn babes desire the sincere meat that you may grow. As you grow, your taste change. But appetite must be there to remain relevant in the work of God. Another attribute of a child is that a child takes correction well. We are teaching key service as key to greatness. That a worker that does not take correction cannot attain greatness. Even in life, in the secular world, if a child, if a worker does not take correction, your promotion may likely be stored. If a worker, if a, a staff, a personnel is not taking correction, it cannot be corrected. If, if productivity will reduce, one, there will be negative vibes around the person. There will be negative energy around the person. So you, are you, you, may, you stand the risk of, 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 of contaminating other workers' workers ethics. So they may have to let you off, lay you off. So a child takes correction well. Christ was losing a child. He said, you must be converted. You must have an attitude that takes correction for you to attain greatness in the things of God. Another attribute of a child is that a child receives rebuke and takes it to no heart. You spank a child now, the child cries, he throws tantrum. After then, in the next five to ten minutes, it is back to play again. It's back into playing. A child does not take rebuke with disdain. They forget easily. Many of us, as workers, children of God, we don't forgive easily. When we are corrected, we pick offense, we don't let go, and we want to do exploit for God, it doesn't go that way. A child recognizes the voice of his parent, especially his mother. A child can miss any other voice, but children do not miss the voice of their parent, especially the mother, in this case, the mentor. As Christian workers, as children of God, if you want to go far in life, you must hear the voice of your mentor. Of course, I know mentor mentor relationship has been abused in several instances, but we cannot use the exception to be the rule. That if you have messed up mentor mentor relationship, does not mean that mentorship is not of God. 
As a believer, if you must grow and you want to desire to achieve the full potential of God in your life, you must hear the voice of your mentor. Another thing about children is that children ask questions. Do you want to be great? Ask questions. There are people that have gone ahead of you. The Bible says we are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. Let us therefore run. There are people that have gone ahead. If you want to go far in life, Listen to those who have passed through that path. Whether in entrepreneurship, whether in the scientific world, whether in the academia, if you want to attain greatness, you must listen to those who have tread that path. And that's why they said, never listen to criticism from people who have not reached where you are. People that have not walked the path cannot criticize you and take it to heart. If people must criticize you and you want to listen, listen to those who have gone the path. They may be telling you what is correct. But for people that have not attained half of what you attain to criticize you and you are offended, then you don't know the God you carry. The Christian worker is involved in a sacred work and not civil service. So the standard, the expectation of a Christian worker exceed that in the secular world. So that means as, as much as the standard the world put in secular world, the believer's work is far more than that. It's a divine assignment with higher demands than any secular assignment. Hallelujah. In Luke 22, 22, 24 to 27 is there. Now, the call of God for more workers is right. That's why God is calling more workers. In the book of Mark, Matthew chapter 9, Matthew chapter 9, Verse 37, Matthew 9, 37. He says, Then he said to his disciples, The harvest in, is indeed plentiful, but the laborers are few. So pray to the Lord of the harvest to force out and trust laborers into his field. The Amplified. In the King James Version says, The harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Hallelujah. God is calling for workers, dedicated workers. Many people are jumping churches because they are tired of working in the house of God. Let me tell you something. If God calls you, you will support the ministry he has called you into. Our work in Global Altar is to get believers strengthened for the work of the harvest of the end time. Our work is to, is to, is to, is to tell you that God is counting on you. God can do without you, but he has, it has pleased God to ordain you and to use you. So you must take that position with honor and dignity. The work of the believer is to the Lord of the harvest, the true owner of the world. And I say here that it is important to have right perception to Christian service. And part of it is that one, when you have a right perception to Christian service, it brings humility to the believer. Hallelujah. It brings humility to the believer. When you have understanding, when you have the perception that God has not called you into a life, into a life of emptiness, when you have understanding that God has called you into a life of productivity, it makes you humble. Christ said, as I, he, said I, he said, you didn't choose me in John chapter 15. He said, you didn't choose me, but I choose you and ordained you. When you know that your call is from God, when you know that your, your, your anointing is from God, you have to stay humble. Men that thought, men that believe in that their sufficiency is of themselves, they crashed out. God does not want you to crash out. Another understanding you must have as a child of God working in the vineyard is that it is a real privilege to work in the house of God. It's a real privilege to work as a believer. Are you called to support? Are you called to finance the gospel? It's a real privilege. Because the Bible says, a cattle on a thousand he belongs to God. Are you called as a singer? It's a privilege. Are you called as a teacher like myself? It's a privilege. Are you called as an usher? It's a privilege. Are you called as a mission financier? It's a privilege. Are you called to arrange the church? It's a privilege. Whatever you are called to do, take it as a real privilege. You know why? <laughs> Jesus said, if you will not worship me, my God, my Father is able to raise stones. Can you imagine such a disaster? That you are alive and stones are the one worshiping God. 
That will not be my portion. May stones not rise to praise God while you are alive, while I am alive. So it's a real privilege to be of service in the kingdom of God. Three, it takes burden of you to the Lord. The Bible says, no man entangled in a battle by his own resources. When you are a worker in the house of God, the command of heaven takes care of you. Hallelujah. The command of heaven protects you. The command structure of heaven, of divinity is at your side. They are very, the Bible says God has given to us angels as ministering spirits. So when you have this understanding, you know that God is protecting you. God is fighting for you. God is keeping you. God is nourishing you. God is sustaining you in everything you do. Why? Because you are of him. Hallelujah. And you see that you, uh, you are entitled to divine protection and promotion. History is replete with missionaries who were ambushed by the enemy, by tribal, by tribal nations that want to kill them, and miraculously God delivered them. Because he said, go into the ends of the earth and with you. The Lord is able to protect him who he has called. It is time for us to believe God for what he says. Ken Hagin says, God says it, I believe it, and that settles it. I'm encouraging us tonight. That God has called you and so is able to protect, is able to promote you. Are you working in the house of God and your promotion seems, seems tall? Even promotion in your secular work and you are a committed worker in the house of God, I speak to you tonight. That that embargo, that siege over you is broken in the name of Jesus. Go back to God in the place of prayers. Remind him of the covenant. Because you say, I will nurture you, I will sustain you, I will nourish you. When God calls you, he's able to bear you in his wings. Service as key to greatness. Another thing again is that when you have the right perception of God has called you into service, you, it prevents and protects against offenses from men or unexpected quarters. Many of us are offended because a jab thrown at us. Some of us are offended by what men told us. Some of us are offended on how we are treated, maybe by leadership of the church or the group you belong to in the name of the Lord while you are working. Don't take it to heart. Because that we say to your master, you stand on your fall. Tonight's episode is to encourage you to, to draw nearer to God in the service. Because some of us are getting weary. There's a heart cry in heaven. Some believers are getting tired. Some of us are getting tired. We are getting discouraged at the media. News splash, media splash, social scandal, social scandal. We are getting tired. But yet, don't be tired. Don't be tired. Hold on to God. And don't let any man offend you. But the Bible says, don't let, say, don't let any man offend you. Don't let any root of bitterness springing up trouble you. And dear men may be defied. The book of Hebrews. Don't let anything trouble you. Now, what are challenges of a Christian worker? Like Paul, you'll be challenged. As a Christian worker, you'll be challenged. One, you stand the risk of being misunderstood by fellow believers. You stand the risk of being misunderstood by fellow believers. But don't take offense. Many of them, the Bible says there are diversities of operations of the Holy Ghost. As you work and as you serve, Men are going to misunderstand you. But when you understand the grace and the call of God upon your life, you move on. Sometimes you may suffer lack. Apostle Paul says, I know how to abound in one. I know how to abound. I know how to abase. Sometimes you may suffer lack. And that is the reason why you must be dependent on God. Sometimes you may suffer deprivation. Deprivation doesn't mean that God has left your side. Sometimes it becomes a training and experience on your dependent on God. We have heard of preachers that their money, everything was exhausted, yet miraculously their pot was being filled with meat every day until that season passed. God could fill Elijah with raven. Ravens are eaters. If you study ravens as bird, ravens are great eaters. Yet God used them to bring food for Elijah. What does that tell you? That God is able to nourish you through unusual means when your focus is on God. Another thing again that you may challenge as a worker is that you may be attacked for the wrong reasons. 
Apostle Peter said, if you are suffering, don't suffer for the wrong, as a, as a believer, don't suffer wrongly. Rather, if you must suffer, suffer for the right reason. That means, don't suffer because you are caught stealing or caught doing some wrong things. If you are suffering, if you are, let, don't be attacked for the, you may be attacked for the wrong reasons as a believer. Another thing again is that sometimes you suffer betrayal from friends and family. Yes. These are part of the peril of being a worker. That is part of the price. Sometimes you are attacked unjustly. Sometimes you are betrayed. A close associate of you run away with your phones. Sometimes a close associate betray you with that which is very dear to you. These are part of the hazard. But in all, in all, in all, in all, you must not be discouraged. I can conclude here by 1 Timothy chapter 5. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17. 1 Timothy 5, verse 17 and 18. Here, it says, it says, Let the elders who rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in the word and doctrine. For the scripture says, You shall not muzzle an ox while it treads out the grain. And the laborer is worthy of his wages. I want to let you know tonight that as a Christian worker, serving in the house, serving in the temple, greatness is where God desires you to be. Greatness is where God wants you planted. He wants you to focus. God, the Bible says, the elders that rule well, count them for double honor. And if you are double honored, and you rule well, you are doubled again. So there's a multiplier effect upon you as a believer. As long as the Lord keeps you. And the Bible says the laborer is worthy of his wages. God is able to meet your needs. God is able to supply your necessities. God is able to meet your health needs, your financial needs, your economic needs, your social needs. Everything because the body of Christ is surrounded by giftings. The Lord will bless his word in our heart tonight. The Lord will cause his word to multiply in our hearts tonight. As we hold on, the Bible says, He that lay his hands on the trough that look back is not fit for the kingdom. God does not want you to look back. Fellow soldiers of Christ, move on, march on, because service is the key to greatness. The Lord will cause his word to be blessed and rooted in our heart in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you. We bless you tonight. Lord, you've encouraged every worker in the kingdom to hold on. Lord, we thank you that you will cause us to walk in the light of your power. Revelation will grow and we shall become better workers and faithful workers in our still worship, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, viewers and listeners. By the grace of God, next week episode, we shall be looking at something that is very dangerous. Something is a trend. When men settle into routine, when God becomes routine in our worship, there's a trap. It's a distraction. Join us next week as we look at that episode. Praise God. Shalom. Thank you for listening to today's episode on The Word with Dr. Levin, presented by Global Altar Platform. Join us every Saturday for the undiluted teachings of the world. You can watch our previous and current episodes on our YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram channels. The channels are YouTube and Facebook, The World with Levin. Instagram is Global Altar Platform. Please turn on notifications to join us live every Saturday by 9 p.m. Listen to our audio messages on Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts by simply searching for The World with Levin. For inquiries, please call 0903-470-0607. Send an email to info at globalautoplatform.com or visit our website on www.globalautoplatform.com. God bless you. See you next week.